We found this cedar window in a shed sale. This will be a perfect kitchen window. So after we got it home safely on the truck, here's what we've bought. The reveals were very easy to take off. I appear to have purchased a very nice window. I bought some box section steel and I got them to mitre the corners. I used magnets to hold the frame together and cement board to protect the wood. I then tacked and welded the corners. I cleaned the joint with the flapper disc. And then I gave it a coat of cold gal. I clamped the frame to the wall to mark it out. This seems like very good advice. I drilled the corners and I marked it out. I used tape to mark the final cuts. I used the baby grinder to cut the panel. I'm having to be my own cameraman. I really like this next bit. That is so rewarding. The engineer's happy dance. I cleaned the paint so I could stitch weld the frame in place. I forgot to film the frame installation, so I'll show you what I did with photos from the big window install. I stitch welded the frame every 30 centimeters or so, and then I sprayed the edges and ran a bead of silicon over the joint. With the steel frame nicely in place, I then put framing around the window opening. By the time it got dark, I'd managed to get a tight wall frame around the window. There were three holes on each side of the window frame and I reused these to screw into the wall frame. I've got some gaps to fill on the front of the window. We reused the reveals to make custom packers. This saw is older than I am and it's awesome. My resident expert cut the packers freehand on his saw. It was brilliant. So here are my custom packers made from the unused reveals. 
it's time to paint the edges green again. These are the gaps that I need to fill with my custom packers. I put in a line of silicon and then I use panel pins just to hold them in place. My frame's now flush with all the packers installed. This topic is covered in full detail in part two of the ebook How to Build an Off Grid Shipping Container House. That evening we had a rainstorm. I've got some drips coming out the bottom of the windowsill. I'll chase it in the morning. My main problem is that the water that collects on the roof is being directed onto the wooden frame. I'll have to sort this. I've got some unused right angle aluminium. This is left over from the prototype roof that I never used. I'll use this to make a rain diverter. I was fed up of having to borrow tools so I've treated myself and I've got a lovely tap and die set. This one's quite fun because it's got a ratchet instead of solid bar. I used my new tap set to put threaded holes into the roof rails. Here's my right angle installed. It rained soon after and the diverter's doing its job. We're not dripping on the frame anymore. And I also added a little more silicon. I cut some architrave and fitted it over the outside of the frame. I tapped some holes to hold the architrave in place. I think this looks pretty good. So now's the big moment, let's try the window. The window also came with the fly screen, so it was just a matter of popping it in place.
Brilliant. A window that opens and closes. Who'd have thought it? So just in case you've never seen a window open and close, here's my window opening and closing. The new windows really change the look and feel of the kitchen and it's going to be really nice. I feel as though I'm on the home straight now, so tune in for the next part of the adventure. Thanks for watching. Press subscribe to follow more of our adventures and please press the like button if you enjoyed this video. It helps the channel. For more information about the ebooks, please visit my website at buildshippingcontainerhouse.com.